Hey everybody, welcome back to the Chase the Summit podcast. I am your host, Dave. Welcome back. Thanks for thanks for joining me today. If you're new here, uh, which you're probably not because I feel like most people just kind of stumble over here from my YouTube channel, but if you are new, thanks for joining me. Uh, thanks for being part of the community and stick around because I do talk about some interesting stuff here. At least I think it's interesting and hopefully you do too. Today I've got some news. I forgot to mention, this is another episode of, uh, I think this is episode four in Week in Fitness Tech, Week in Review, where I try to just cover everything that happened in the week when it comes to like GPS watches, endurance sports, gear, footwear, whatever. Uh, I'm trying to do kind of a weekly recap on things that I've noticed happen in the industry, the, you know, news stories that have popped up in whatever. So this could be a new product release or a firmware update or whatever, and I try to cover it all in this show so you can kind of get a quick download of what's going on. So if you're into that sort of thing, make sure you hit the follow or subscribe button or whatever it is you do on podcasts because I'm still new to all of this. Uh, And if you find it useful, maybe hit the five-star rating on your Apple podcast or Spotify or whatever. That would be just great. So uh, a couple of things I want to follow up on. Uh, First... If you are intending to purchase something like a GPS watch and you purchase from Playbetter, which is a a store that I've worked with a couple of times, um, this is not a sponsored podcast at all. But if you do buy something there, you can use uh, code CTS during your checkout process and actually get a free uh, Chase the Summit uh, holographic sticker. Those stickers are super fun. I love them. They're like, depending on how you look at them is actually, you know, they change colors and stuff and it's kind of got the mountain logo on it. I love them. So if you do intend on buying something, you're getting a a new watch or something and you pick it up from play better, use code CTS at checkout for a free sticker. And again, not sponsored, just something I wanted to bring up because we just worked out that uh, deal uh, last week and I sent them a bunch of stickers to give out. So pretty excited about that. Also, before we dive into the news, I want to just throw this out there. If you are a listener and you're enjoying this podcast and maybe you listened last week when I had Rob from the quantified scientist on, I would love to hear from you to hear what guests I should invite on the show. I've invited a few people already. Some have said yes. Some have said no outright. And some have been kind of a maybe in between, uh, because I would like to bring more people on and just have it open up this discussion of this weird kind of niche that we're all interested in of sports and fitness tech and endurance sports and training and things like that. Um, I would like to have more guests on the show. So if you've got somebody in mind and you think it would be an interesting conversation, shoot me a DM on Instagram or over on my website. You can hit the contact form or just email me, uh, do that. And I'll have links to how to contact me in the show notes of this podcast. So do that. I would love to hear from you. And what else? Oh, yeah. I also want to just start a little segment on these weekly episodes on what's going on in my life and training and kind of just a way to connect with the the viewers and listeners out there. So I'm actually training for a 50, 50 mile ultra marathon that's coming up uh, in a few weeks. I think it's the second week of May. And I am super intimidated right now. This is a race that I've tried to run every year. Unfortunately, last year it was canceled. but Every previous year for like three or four years, I ran this 50 mile race. It's called the Wapak and Back, and it takes place out in kind of like Midwestern Massachusetts. Uh, This is a super hilly, I mean, in my mind, it's pretty hilly course. It's about 12,000 feet of elevation gain over 50 miles, and it's a butt kicker. There's some really hard technical sections, there's some easier sections, but all in all, it is 50 miles and it's on trail in some pretty hard terrain. Now I was trying to be in tip top shape for this and I was, we were, I was motoring. I was actually doing pretty good. A couple of months ago, I was hitting 50 miles a week. I was getting on the trail quite a bit and I was feeling pretty fit, pretty strong And the numbers, even from like Garmin connect on the, the little VO two max estimator thing, we're going in the right direction. Things were going up. So I was doing something right. Unfortunately, lately I've kind of fell, fallen off the wagon a little bit because We're actually in the process of possibly moving and getting our house on the market and looking at new houses and possibly new construction. It's a whole thing. And I'm not even going to get into it. (laughs) 
But this whole process has just added this huge level of stress to my life. And I'm somebody who I, I guess I, I mean, I know stress is real, but I'm somebody who kind of assumes stress is mental and it's not a physical thing, but the stress that I've been under lately, like the anxiety and just this constant decision-making and stress in my head has been wearing on me tremendously in a physical capacity. Like I've, I've been getting headaches and uh, just feeling like super run down my, my Garmin body battery and my whoop band and aura ring, everything's just telling me, dude, you're, you're hurting right now. My HRV has been kind of all over the place and it's, I feel like it's all from this whole house situation we've got going on. So I'm trying to get myself out of this funk. Uh, we've got some big commit commitments this weekend for like open houses and stuff that we got to do. So hopefully once we get past this hurdle of like the big stuff, we'll start to feel a little bit more comfortable and maybe relax a little bit. But lately I've not been feeling that great. And my mileage has been suffering a little bit because I just have, haven't been able to find the time to, to do like my week weekend long run because we've had so many things going on, you know? And then on top of all that, we've got four kids, a dog, a house, you know, it's, it's a lot. And we've been trying to get the house ready to, to get out in the market. I digress. This is not why you came to this podcast, but I just wanted to share some inside baseball on um, what's going on with my training right now. That's not to say I'm not, I'm in bad shape, um, but I'm certainly not. I, I was on the right track a couple of months ago and I feel like now it's just been like kind of just a struggle to keep up with, but I'm still hitting like, you know, 30, 40 miles a week pretty consistently. And I'm about two weeks out. So the hay's kind of in the barn at this point. So we're going to see what happens. I'm going to be at the starting line and I hope I <laughs> walk to the finish line. It may not be my fastest effort ever, but it will be an effort. It will be something. Um, so yeah, that that's all I wanted to mention. Little blurb about my training. I also want to mention what I'm working on for the main YouTube channel. Got a couple of videos coming up. Uh, first of all, I, I've mentioned this in like three podcasts now, but it keeps getting put on the back burner is the ultra Mont Blanc trail running shoes. I've been wearing them a lot. I've got like a, a lot of mixed thoughts on the, the Mont Blancs. Like I like them in some ways and then in other ways, they're almost a showstopper. So stay tuned for that review that'll be coming up And the benefit to keep getting, keep pushing it off is that I've gotten a lot more miles in them now. So it's more of a longer term review than just kind of initial impressions, which I feel like is more va valuable anyways. I'm also working on uh Coros pace two versus polar polar pacer pro. That's a tough sentence to say. Uh, if you don't know the polar pacer pro was just announced a couple weeks ago, I've got a full YouTube video about that. You can check out on the YouTube channel. And of course links for that will be in the show notes of this podcast. But um, I wanted to compare that the new Polar Pacer Pro against the Coros Pace 2. Not only because they have a similar name, but because they fall into a similar price point and they're both marketed towards runner runners. And they've got a similar feature set for GPS watch for both uh, road and trail runners. So I thought they're pretty comparable and it might be worth doing a video about. So that'll be coming soon and stay tuned for that as well. Okay, with all that out of the way, We've been recording for like, what, nine minutes, and I haven't even got to the news. Sorry. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, hang in there with me. So first bit of news today is coming from Sennheiser, a headphone brand. I'm sure you know who they are. If you're familiar with earbuds or even pro audio equipment or home audio equipment, they make all that stuff. So Sennheiser has a new pair of earbuds called, I think they're just called like sport earbuds. What do they call them? Yeah, they don't really have a name here, but they've got a really interesting they've got a really interesting feature on board. So Sennheiser has announced a new pair of sport earbuds that actually reduce reduce noise from your own body. <laughs> now, what does that mean? First of all, let's go through the specs here. Uh, these are 130 bucks, which is actually pretty affordable for uh, Sennheiser. Usually, they're more expensive than that, and they've got. Uh, adaptable acoustic that allow you to choose between open and closed 
ear adapters and be able to tweak equalizer settings uh, in the background. All this information comes from Engadget, by the way, from their article. That's my source. These are also IP54 rated, and they've got up to 18 hours of listening time, which is actually really respectable. And it's kind of surprising that these will be about 130 bucks. So here's the really interesting part. They've got a new feature called Aware EQ, and that will actually try to pass through or, or, or eliminate uh, distracting noises from your own body, like your heart rate, like your heart beating in your chest, uh, footsteps, or anything else that's going on. And one example of this that I can think of personally is like the sound you get sometimes when you wear true, true wireless earbuds, you get this kind of womp, like a thumping sound in your ears because the uh, earbuds like moving around in your ear canal make this like, I, I can't make the sound, but you, you get the idea. It's a, it's a kind of annoying sound in like, it's almost like the better the, the fit of the earbud in your ear, the worse that sound gets. So these new earbuds are potentially a solution for that. I'm super interested in these and I'm definitely going to buy a pair and review them on the channel. They've also got uh, seven millimeter drivers, which are pretty big in Bluetooth 5.2. So they'll have like more codecs and range available. So these are going to be available in May and they're up for pre-order now on Sennheiser's website for $130 and they'll ship on May 3rd. So uh, super interesting earbuds. I like to see brands realize how important these kinds of features are for runners because I feel like the the majority of people buying earbuds are probably using them in like a running or fitness capacity. And it's less about, I mean, there's some percentage of people out there, even myself included, if I'm on an airplane or at work or something, I like to use earbuds. But I the features that I find super duper important for me, I typically look for things that help me when I run, like how hard it is to pause and play music or answer a phone call or skip tracks while I'm actually moving. So I don't have to futz around with what's in my ears. So it's cool to see uh, Sennheiser here putting out something that's very blatantly targeted towards that demographic. So I'm, I'm interested to see where this goes, how it expands over time. What, you know, if other brands copy this, it might be something like active noise cancellation that um, may be become wide widespread over time. Who knows? But it is interesting. Okay, uh, next up, we've got some news from Garmin. Uh, the new Vivo Smart 5 was announced, which is a brand new product. But don't get super excited. This is a budget-friendly option. It's not like a Phoenix alternative or a venue alternative. This is a small wellness tracking device that's designed for sleep tracking, step tracking, calories you know, that's that kind of thing. But it does have some unique features. This time around, the uh, Vivo Smart got an updated heart rate sensor that has SpO2 or pulse ox or blood oxygen saturation built in, which is a nice feature for checking your blood oxygen saturation level throughout the day. And it's got an updated heart rate sensor for better accuracy. Um, these are looking pretty interesting and they are a direct competitor for the Fitbit Charge 5. So the Fitbit Charge 5, if you don't know, is almost identical to this. Both of these devices are like the Vivo Smart 5 from Garmin is a thin kind of band looking thing. It's not really a watch looking thing. It's more of like what you think when you hear the word Fitbit. It's kind of a thin uh, band with a, a little display on it. The display is actually pretty nice looking, but it's, um, you know, it's not, nothing fancy. It's kind of unobtrusive and low profile, comes in various colors. And it's got seven days of battery life. So here's the thing. What makes this interesting to me, as somebody who wears a lot of garments, Garmin actually has a feature called Physio TrueUp or TrueUp in general. And what TrueUp does is it allows you to wear multiple uh, Garmin devices. You could have a Phoenix and a Venue and a 945 and a 245 and wear them on different days of the week in true up will actually aggregate all of that data and still sync it over to Garmin connect. So you won't miss anything in Garmin connect, even though you're wearing like 10 different devices. So from my perspective, this new Vivo smart five 
it's kind of interesting because I wear a, right now I'm wearing a Garmin Tactic 7, which is a huge, a gigantic watch. There's no getting around it. It's uh, 51 millimeters in diameter, 15 millimeters thick. Uh, it's a little bit heavy. It's definitely noticeable on your wrist. Not something you forget's there, right? So I don't love the size. I do love the features. I like the look of it. I, I've kind of gotten over the size a little bit, but if I could wear something smaller with the same kind of stuff on board, I'd be happy. Now, where the Fitbit, or not Fitbit, the, the Vivo Smart 5, what I find interesting about this is somebody in my position that likes to wear a big watch occasionally could also wear the Vivo Smart 5 on, you know, just going to work or going grocery shopping or just around the house or whatever and still capture your daily metrics for heart rate, body battery, sleep tracking, and all that stuff will still go up to the cloud at Garmin Connect and you won't miss any of that information and you'll have a nice, thin, lightweight, inexpensive device on your wrist. And then when you want to go on a big hike or an adventure or a big trail run or something and you're out there for like 20 hours, then you reach for your Garmin Phoenix 7 or the Tactic 7 or a 945. And you kind of get the best of both worlds. You're getting all the information from your wellness and daily life. And then when you record your activities, you've got your mapping and, you know, all that stuff that comes along the training tools uh, on the nicer, higher end devices. So you could actually wear two devices and maybe this could, you know, like a Phoenix 7 is pretty expensive, but if you look at it in a different way and maybe wear the Vivo Smart 5 as like your daily driver and it's 150 bucks, maybe you could invest in a cheaper watch for your like trail watch. So you could go with like a Garmin Phoenix 5, for instance, and that maybe that has all you need for the trail. And then the the Vivo Smart 5 could be your your everyday watch. It's kind of a weird way to think about it, but that's the first thing I thought about when I saw this Vivo Smart 5. You know, it's cheap enough where it could be like an accessory to your main watch, which is kind of a weird way to look at it. But um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Unfortunately, I was not included on the cool, cool kid list for this one. They did not send one me to me early for review. So I had to buy one like everybody else. And it's in the mail. I don't actually have it yet. I will have a re review on it when I do get it and I get a chance to test it. Um, and that'll be up on the channel eventually. One thing to mention, though. I mentioned that this is an alternative to like the Fitbit Charge 5. The Fitbit Charge 5 actually has a built-in GPS chip where the Vivo Smart 5 from Garmin has no GPS built in. So if you want to record a running activity or a bike ride or something, you're going to have to bring your phone with you because the Garmin will actually use your phone's antenna uh, to record your GPS activity. So you will get GPS data, but you have to make sure your phone is actually in your pocket or in your backpack or something. And of course, there's issues with that. If you've got your phone at the bottom of your backpack or like strapped to your bike in a pouch or something, you might get worse GPS accuracy. But again, this device is not designed to really be like your main GPS watch. It's really just if you need to record a run with it in a pinch, you can. Um, but yeah, the, the Fitbit Charge 5 does have a GPS chip built in. So it does have a little bit of a leg up there compared to the the Vivo Smart, but I, you know, it's not everything because if you've watched my review about the Fitbit Charge 5, I found some pretty major issues with the GPS accuracy and heart rate performance on it. So yeah, I mean, it, at the end of the day, if the Fitbit Charge 5 didn't have a GPS antenna, I wouldn't complain because I, I wouldn't plan on using it anyways, because it's not very good. Uh, that said, the Charge 5 is cheaper right now. It's on sale for 130 bucks, and it does have GPS built in. Even though it's not very good, you still have it in a pinch if you didn't have your phone on you. So a lot to think about there, and you'll have to wait for my full in-depth review on the Vivo Smart 5 to uh, you know get to the bottom of that. So stay tuned for that. It was announced, uh, and if you want to watch like someone else's video on it, check out uh, DC Rainmaker or Desfit. Both of those guys have uh, pretty solid videos out on those as well. Uh, what else we got in the news? Oh yeah, there was a pretty big software update from Garmin that came out to the Phoenix 7 and Epix Gen 2. This is a firmware update. I believe it was, what was it? 8.35, I think. And 
this is a huge firmware update. There's like 70 changes involved in it. That said, it's not very exciting. Like if you read through it, just a lot of like minor tweaks and fixes. So don't get super excited if you have a Phoenix 7. But there's one thing of note that I noticed uh, that they did change on the Epix Gen 2. And that was they tweaked the algorithm. I don't know if that's the right word for it, but the way that the always on display works on the the Garmin Epix Gen 2. The Epix Gen 2, if you don't know, has a always on display. You can turn that option on in the menu and it keeps the OLED display turned on all the time, as the name implies. The problem is that with the always on display, it's not actually always on. It, it turns on bright for a moment and then it dims itself down. The reason it dims down is A, to reduce uh, the battery life consumption because it's an OLED display, it sucks down a lot of energy and juice. Um, but also B, because it also doesn't want to burn in the screen. It, it, OLED displays have a issue where if you have a bright uh, area of the screen illuminated like 24 hours a day, it'll actually burn that color into the, the diodes on the display permanently destroying or damaging the display and you'll be stuck with a Garmin Epix Gen 2 that looks like it's kind of got a faint ghosted watch face on it all the time when you're in other screens. So the other issue is that a lot of people bought these watches and they intended to um, use these as like a bike computer. And so people assumed, oh, I've got it always on display. I can use this as a bike computer in mount the Epix Gen 2 to my handlebars and then go on a ride and just glance down and see that always on display. In theory, that sounds right, but because the screen dims, a lot of cyclists had the issue where they were like tapping their display to brighten it back up again to read the information. <laughs> you get what I'm getting at here. Uh, so I think Garmin, what they tried to do in this firmware update is kind of mitigate that issue. I don't know how, and I haven't personally tested it, but I did see in the news that there was a pretty major firmware update and that was one of the line items was like a tweak to that algorithm. In either case, I would suggest uh, doing the firmware update if you do have an Epix Gen 2 or a Phoenix 7, and hopefully it helps you out. Hopefully there's a couple of fixes in there that might affect you. Uh, for the most part though, I think there's just minor little things that, you know, kind of brushed up some menus or typos or whatever. So nothing major, but that that is the one thing in the firmware update I think might be of note. Okay, next up in Garmin news, we've got more rumors coming out uh, a couple of days ago, there was a massive leak, quote unquote, from uh, this is the source for this is Tech Radar. It's a pretty legit website. And the the title of the article is Massive Leak Names Garmin's Next Seven Watches, including uh, the 955 and the 255. And this article goes on to explain what, inf what information was actually leaked. And it's not like it's not really cut and dry. They didn't leak a ton of information. So the title of this article is a little bit clickbaity, but I get it. That's what people do. Um, in either case, the long and short of it is the major piece of information that kind of floated out there about the Garmin 255 is that there'll be two size options. And I think this came from like an FCC filing or something. So there'll be a Garmin 255 and probably the bigger version or the same size as the 245. And then there'll be a 255S. I feel like this is no surprise if you're familiar with the Garmin lineup. This is something to do with like all new watches, like the Instinct even has the Instinct 2 and then the 2S. So it's something they've been doing. Uh, so not really a surprise, but apparently they've kind of com confirmed that the next Forerunner 255 will in fact be in two sizes, which is interesting, but uh, again, not very surprising. That's really the only... Um, notable stuff that I'm, re I'm reading in this article. The rest is just kind of regurgitated from what we already knew. Uh, it'll probably get the new uh, heart rate sensor, the new Elevate 4.0 heart rate sensor. And there is it seems like the rumors are back and forth on whether or not this will be an OLED device. If I had to guess, I would assume that it's going to be a MIP or a transflective display like the old 245 because that's good for runners and that's what the target demographic is here. So that's the rumors about the 255. Let me just put a disclaimer out there that I don't know anything about the 400 255. 
This is all speculation. This is leaked information uh, from an FCC filing. So this, this is not concrete or real evidence. And I don't know anything. So don't ask me. Don't DM me on Instagram saying, hey, man, when's it coming out? You know, I, I li- literally know nothing. And if I did know something, I probably signed an NDA. That means I couldn't tell you. Um, I'm only regurgitating this article from Tech Radar from some alleged leaks that are coming uh, from Garmin. So now that we've said that, uh, the other new device coming from Garmin that's also been leaked in the same article is the Garmin Venue SQ2. This uh, is a follow-up to the original Garmin Venue SQ. If you're unaware of what that was, it's basically a small Apple Watch looking device that was very inexpensive for its time, came out in 2020, and it was, uh, I think, 200 bucks around there. There was like a music and non-music version, and it was kind of meant to challenge the Apple Watch SE. The Apple Watch SE is a great device, um, but at the time, it didn't have great battery life and a few other features. So this was more of like a sports-centric version of the Apple Watch with that same square kind of display and format. So apparently there will be a new Garmin Venue SQ, the SQ2, and it'll also have uh, the same LCD display, but not an AMOLED display. So do with that information what you will. Again, this is a leak. And again, I will say it again. I know nothing. So don't ask me about it. (laughs) Um, Okay, the final topic I want to talk about today is completely unrelated to all wearables or fitness tech. Well, it's kind of fitness tech. It's something I found personally interesting. And it comes from Nordic Track. There's a new product from Nordic Track that has voice controlled uh, assistance in a dumbbell. <laughs> I, I found this more comical than anything. Uh, I don't know. I feel like we're adding electronics to the silliest things now just because we can. We're at a, we're at a place in technology where Like we need to make everything smart and intelligent. Soon we're going to have like wallets in our pocket that have, you know, Google on them. I don't know. But anyways, these new dumbbells from Amazon or from Nordic track have Amazon Alexa built in and there's a little display on the stand. These are like adjustable dumbbells like you'd find with uh, Bowflex or any of those other brands, but they come with this special stand with like a little tablet kind of built into the top of it. And that little tablet has Amazon Alexa built in. So I guess the idea is you can say, Hey, Alexa. Oh man, I shouldn't have said that. I probably just triggered so many Alexas if you're uh, playing this on speakers of some sort. Anyways, the idea is you can act, ask Alexa to give you a workout for the day. And then the display and little tablet thing will actually guide you through various workouts. So kind of similar through like, The Peloton app or the Peloton bikes and treadmills, they've got that display on there that you can kind of swivel off to the side and then you can like do yoga or whatever. These dumbbells are kind of aiming at the same idea, just in like a dumbbell format. I don't really know how to feel about these. I think it, again, it could be a gimmick, but at the same time, maybe there is some value to it for people who, you know, want to structure their workouts Um, I didn't really read too much into the details about this, but it would be cool if there were accelerometers in the dumbbells and maybe when you do a curl or press, it could pick up that and count your reps for you. And then maybe, uh, take your heart rate data and how many reps you did to judge like your fatigue or training load. That would be pretty cool. I really didn't go down the rabbit hole of learning all about these things, but it is something I just wanted to mention in this podcast because I thought it was kind of funny. And now you've got Alexa on your dumbbells. Why isn't that news? That's definitely news. Okay, uh, that kind of wraps it up for this episode of Week in Tech Review. Again, I'll be doing the show for the foreseeable future as long as I can come up with enough news on a weekly basis. Uh, This week, it was a little bit slow. We didn't have a ton of information about or a ton of news to share on the week in tech review. But I thought we we had some good nuggets in there, some good little tidbits. If you enjoyed this podcast, I would really appreciate it if you gave me a rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Make sure you to to follow along, hit that subscribe or follow button. Make sure to 
subscribe on YouTube because that's where I put out the majority of my content. And if you're not subscribed over there, I would really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, that's the end of this podcast. The weather outside today is so beautiful. I'm really looking to getting looking forward to getting a run in today. So I'm gonna wrap this podcast up. I'm gonna get my run in and then I'm gonna go film some videos because I got to do that for this weekend. Okay, now I'm just rambling. Now I'm just rambling at the end of my podcast. All right, folks, that's it. I appreciate you. Thank you for joining me today. And I will see you or you'll hear me. You can't see me. Okay, I got to go now. Bye.